Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. My name is Lore. I am currently filming this on May 1st, so I hope that this next month has nothing but greatness for everyone. And that's cheesy, but it's true. Hope we all have a great, fantastic May. I have a lot to talk about today because in April I was able to read 42 volumes of manga and I also read six books. So let's just jump in first with the novels. And honestly, these are not going to be in any particular order. I just read too much to even want to rank everything. So one of the books I was able to get to in April is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. And I just adore this cover. And the concept for this book really grabbed my attention. So I first started reading this book through my library and about 25% into it, I was really in love with the writing. I went ahead and bought my own copy, but I might have jumped the gun a bit too soon. But anyway, let me backtrack a bit. So this book is following two wives, Leah and Miri, and we get both of their perspectives, but Leah's perspective is set in the past and Miri's perspective is set in the present. And I'm forgetting the logistics, but somehow Leah ends up working for a company that sends her out in a submarine with a few other people. And so they plan to go down on this submarine trip and spend maybe like a week or two down there, maybe three weeks, but it ends up being months and months and months that she and those other people get trapped down there in that submarine. And then in Mary's perspective set in the present, it is after Leah and the others have returned, but something has changed about Leah. She isn't the same woman that left and it's a little bit of a horror, but not really, honestly. I would say it's pretty relaxed with the horror stuff. It's more soft. And I would say that this book is definitely just an exploration of grief and of loss. And again, the writing is so beautiful, so lush and just exquisite, really. In the end, the execution of the concept and the ending frustrated me. I thought it was a bit lackluster. I would have loved to get more answers in the end. I feel I feel like this is a book I want to return to when I'm older because I feel like I would be able to digest the topics and just appreciate the slow pace to this book a lot more. So I ended up giving this, I believe it was three stars, maybe 3.5 stars. I can't remember. Again, great concept, beautiful writing, just a little bit of a lackluster execution. I was also able to finish A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is the first book in his A Song of Ice and Fire series. I believe that's what it's called. That's what I've been calling it for years, so I hope that was correct. Everyone knows the basic premise and plot to this, so I won't rehash it here. I buddy read this with a friend of mine and it did take us a few months, but we finally made it to the end. It really felt like we had finished a marathon, to be honest, because it is such a ginormous book. And like, it doesn't look like it here, but this is the font. And there are 600 something pages. It was just a very long read, honestly. And with having already seen the show, pretty much everything in that first season of the show is in this book. It just felt repetitive to me. It was, again, just so long. It got boring in so many different parts. But I don't know if my opinion of this would have changed had I not watched the show already. I really only found myself enjoying the chapters focused on a few characters like Arya, Tyrion, and then Danny. Everyone else I was just bored with and I was like, I can't wait until everyone here dies so we can just focus on the characters that are actually interesting. I don't see myself continuing on with this series unless he writes that last book. Another high fantasy I was able to get to in April was Mistborn or The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I have an entire dedicated reading vlog to just this book. It is over 50 minutes long so if you want to hear super in-depth thoughts about it or just follow me on my reading journey, I highly highly suggest you just watch that video. I ended up enjoying this book. I think if I had to give this a rating I would give it a 3.75 five or a four star rating. Most likely a four star if I'm being honest because I really did end up enjoying my time with this and essentially we're following two main characters Vin and Kelsier as they team up with a bunch of other people to overthrow this person, this entity called the Lord Ruler who 
is in charge of this world that they live in and basically has split the two people up into two different classes, the nobility and then the ska. And the nobility are the rich, powerful people and the ska are the slave people. So it's just them trying to band together with a bunch of other different characters to try to create chaos in one city in order to basically overthrow the Lord Ruler and steal a bunch of his stuff. I won't really get much more into it. I will say the magic system in this and the action and the world building are very, very well done. So unique, so interesting, something I've literally never read before because people in this world, in order to access powers, first have to be born of a certain way and then they have to ingest metals and burn those metals. So it's just so fascinating. It's so cool. Such a unique concept. A thousand percent my favorite part of this book were the action scenes of people using the magic. I will say character work probably could be a bit better. It was a little bit lacking but again I overall enjoyed it and I'm definitely continuing on to the second book. I also read another fantasy book but it is a fantasy romance book and that is A Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. I read this book in one day because it was so entertaining, fast paced, and I loved the two main characters and I loved the romance between them. So essentially the female lead has been a slave for the past seven or eight years of her life. When she goes to buy back her freedom, something goes wrong and she has to flee the land she's currently residing in. So she flees across the ocean to this other land where there are a ton more of people just like her who have access to magic and such things like that. It is there that she wants to train but in order to train she has to apprentice under a teacher. They send her to apprentice under this really grumpy dude but you can obviously tell that he's grumpy due to a lot of like trauma. It's a love story from there. I will say a lot of dark topics explored so keep that in mind. I thought the writing was great. The e-version I read had a few typos and things like that but it really didn't detract from the story too much. Again I absolutely loved the two main lead characters. I found them both endearing, both fantastic and I was rooting for both of them for real. However, I will say that the world building and the magic system, not that great. Could have been expanded upon, kind of confusing. Another aspect of this book that I really enjoyed reading about was language. So like I said earlier, the main female lead has to travel across the ocean to a different land and they don't speak the same language. I thought that how the author portrayed that was so fascinating and interesting and also endearing in a way. I don't really know how to explain what I'm trying to say but I just loved how language and learning a second language and communicating in that second language was portrayed. It was something that just made sense in my head. So it's me editing and I totally forgot to add that the romance is a little bit of a slow burn which I absolutely adored but the characters like do end up together and so I feel no need to continue on with the next book or the next books. So also just like in general I'm content with the ending so I don't really plan on continuing on. So the next two books I read were both rereads. What I reread was Twilight and New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. Everybody knows what Twilight is. I don't really have to talk about it but I feel like I do have to explain myself because it's Twilight, you know? You know how most people say that, oh, Harry Potter or Percy Jackson are the books that got them into reading? Well, the book that got me into reading was this book right here, Twilight. I read it in fourth grade when I was nine years old. I genuinely know for a fact that if I had not read Twilight, when I was in fourth grade, I would not be the reader I am today. This is so kind of cringy and cheesy, but without this book, I don't think I would have fallen in love with reading the way that I did. And now, of course, as a grown woman who is no longer nine years old, I know objectively that this book and New Moon are both just 
terribly written, terribly constructed, the characters all suck, and it's just, it's so wrong on so many fronts, but nostalgia has a grip on me and it will never let up. I will always have a special place for these books in my heart, and the last time I reread them was 2017 and I just felt like it was time to reread them again. If I had a nine-year-old kid, I probably would not let them read Twilight. I can't talk about Twilight without bringing up this clip, so enjoy. Millions of Twilight fans out there just cannot wait to see this. Uh, it's very uh, almost heartbreaking because they don't want it to be over. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bittersweet, isn't it? <sighs> um, for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those were all of the novels that I read in April, and now we can discuss the 42 volumes of manga. 42 is a lot to talk about. So I will try to keep this brief, well, as brief as I possibly can. So let's start off with the singles or just like the volume ones that I read. Basically all of the manga I read that I only read one volume of, English, is my first language. So I don't know why that was such a struggle. Y'all get what I'm trying to say though, so let's just jump right on into it. Okay, so these first four that I have to talk about, I did talk about them more in depth in a manga reading vlog that I did, and I can link that video if you are interested in checking that out. So first up, I read volume one of Queen's Quality. This is the first volume in the sequel series to QQ Sweeper. I heard it described as a middle ground between shoujo and shonen, and I think I would very much agree with that because we're following two main characters, of course, you know, love, story, romance, shoujo, the usual. What kind of makes this story more unique, the main male character is an expert cleaner and what that means is he goes into people's minds and cleans around in there, basically expelling all of the dark thoughts and dark energies in people's minds and then she kind of apprentices with him. You learn more about their past, you learn more about the world of being a cleaner, a sweeper, if you may. And I'm genuinely so excited to see where the rest of the story goes. This next one I have mixed feelings on and that is volume one of Honey Lemon Soda. This is again another romance manga following the two main characters on the cover. The main female character here was bullied a lot in middle school and she wants things to change around in high school. She wants to make new friends, put herself out there and just not let things go the way that they did in middle school. But you know, high school starts, she realizes that things are pretty much the same until one day this dude here basically forces her to stand up for herself and you see how the story kind of takes off from there. And I say I have mixed feelings on this because I don't know how I feel about mostly this dude here. He's very harsh and kind of mean at points, but then nice at other points. And I just don't know how to feel about him. I don't know if I dislike him. I don't know if I like him. She definitely does need to grow a backbone, so there is that. But I don't know if I agree with the way that the dude kind of goes around about it, if that makes any sense. Also, I really enjoy the artwork. It's so cutesy, but then there are some things about the artwork as well that I'm like, eh, I don't like that. So again, mixed feelings. I think I will have to continue on to volume two when it releases just to confirm whether this story is for me or if it's not for me. I read Spy Family Volume 9. I loved it. It always just makes me feel happy. This was no different. A thousand percent will be continuing on with the rest of the series as it releases. Next up, I read Volume 1 of Princess Jellyfish, which the edition I have is actually Volumes 1 and 2 combined, which I enjoyed the colored pages that we got at the beginning of each volume. I just thought they were beautiful. That's something about this manga that I really do love and appreciate is the artwork. I just love it so much. I don't really know why. It just works so well for me. And I'm trying to find those other colored pages. Oh, here we are. Yeah, so like volume two starts off with these. Yeah, I really love the artwork so much, but the story I have mixed feelings on. Similar to Honey, Lemon Soda, I just don't really know how I feel about it. I really only enjoyed three characters, this one here, this one here, and then this one's brother, but everyone else was a little bit too rude in my opinion and just like stuck in their ways, I guess. And I feel like the story was a bit convoluted because there were so many different plot lines going on all at once. And for the first two volumes of a manga, I felt like it probably should have concentrated on 
less just to like really establish these characters and like what was happening in the story. And I guess I just don't really understand what this creator is trying to do here because there is so much going on. I was just a little bit confused and I just didn't understand like the messaging. Again, just I don't know how I feel because I did really like those three characters. I really do love the artwork, but the story is a bit all over the place in my opinion. I also read volume one of Call of the Night by Kotoyama. So the basic premise of this story is that this dude here has insomnia and I believe he's like 14, 15. He's a teenager. He has insomnia and so he kind of just stops going to school and just walks around outside at night because he can't sleep. And then this female character here is actually a vampire and as he's walking about in the night their paths cross and the story just takes off from there really. I don't have too many thoughts or opinions on this. I find the characters endearing in their own ways and I do want to continue on but yeah I guess that's really my only thoughts. I don't really have much to say. I like the artwork. Yeah I don't know. I just guess I'll have to see where the story goes. I also read volume one of Ladies on Top. This is obviously explicit so if you're underage don't read it but basically these two characters here don't really get off on following the typical gender roles. He doesn't really like taking a more dominant position. She doesn't really like being too submissive. And it's just them kind of figuring out how to be intimate with one another. I mean, that's pretty much it. I read it in like 20 minutes. There are barely any words. It's mostly just pictures. I think it's a cool concept that has great potential to hold such great conversations about gender roles in society and in intimacy. But I didn't really care about the characters and it just felt like nothing special, honestly. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with this. The next manga I read was a volume one of Say I Love You. This is a romance. It is from the 2000s and it has that very specific 2000s feel and vibe to it that like I really enjoyed. And it really just scratches a very particular itch in my head, if that makes any sense. Basically the main character here was betrayed when she was younger and so she has kind of become very closed off from other people and kind of feisty, I guess you could say. And then when the male love interest comes into her life, he is instantly intrigued by her because she is so feisty. I already bought volumes two through five so that I could get through them and it just instantly hooked me. I just was instantly engaged and wanted to keep reading and I'm just so excited to see where the story goes. So next up I read volume one of Renee, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is by Rumiko Takahashi who is the creator of Inuyasha and I didn't really go into this really expecting much but I somehow really got engaged with the plot and the characters and I do want to continue on but I don't know if it's hard to collect. If it's hard to collect I'm gonna be so upset. But anyway, I'm going to try, I guess. And essentially, the main premise of this is our main character here, Sakura, was spirited away as a child and ever since she returned, she has been able to see ghosts. This boy here, Rene, is actually, guess you could say, living between the human world and the afterlife. He actually helps people pass over into the next life. And it's told very episodically. I really enjoyed the artwork. I mean, that goes without saying. It's from Rumiko Takahashi. But yeah, I do want to just continue again. You know, it's volume one. Like, I don't really have too many thoughts. If anyone here has read this, like, let me know your thoughts on it. I would love to know. So those are basically all of the single volumes that I read this month and now we can jump into the rest of the manga. So I was able to read volumes 1 through 11 of Love of Kill and holding this up is gonna suck so. So here are volumes 1 through 11. I'm only gonna hold up volume 1 because holding up 11 volumes of manga is just not something I want to do. So this story follows two assassins and one is just overly infatuated with the other and it is a romance from there. Tons of violence and death because of the premise but it is so exciting. Like I really just devoured all of the volume. I don't think I ever want it to end. Yeah, I just love these characters so much. It's so action-packed. It just like leaves you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, I just adored it. I adored the characters. I adore the action. I, I adore everything about it. 
I feel like it's always so much easier to talk about things you dislike than things you like because I really don't have much to say about this but I loved it so much and I'm so excited to read more. I really don't want it to end. I also read volumes 5, 6, and 7 of Dr. Stone. I don't own them, I just borrow them from my library but it is very good and a very interesting story. I really think it is just like the most unique shonen story that I have read. So basically this is set thousands and thousands of years in the future after everyone on earth has been petrified into stone and the story kicks off with two main characters breaking out of that stone and then using science to rebuild the world. And I'm not a sci-fi girl, but the science in this is just done so well and so easy to understand that I didn't feel lost in it at all. Well, maybe sometimes, but not that much, not that much. I really enjoy all of the characters and the artwork itself is just amazing and really just out of this world. It is done so well and so beautifully and it's super fun to read. But like I don't feel the need to pick up my own copies so I don't know what that says about it but yeah it's a good time. It's a good time. I also read volumes 1 through 6 of Short Cake Cake by the same creators of A Sign of Affection. Even though I don't like A Sign of Affection I definitely like this a lot more than that. But yeah so these are the volumes and basically we're following a main character named Ten who has to move into a boarding school in order to avoid a two hour both ways commute to school. So when she moves into this boarding house there are obviously other students living there. It is gonna be romance and high school drama but it is so good, so entertaining. It's a popcorn read. It's just for fun, it's just for entertainment and that's exactly what it what I go to it for and that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I think the artwork is very cute, very adorable. I think that the love trial in this is super interesting because the two male leads are friends and so it just creates a lot of interesting dynamics and it's just fun. Like I've said a million times, it's just so much fun. I already know that I'm going to finish the story and then I read volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Meisan Ikoku by Rumiko Takahashi again. This is a romantic comedy written during the 80s. I really enjoyed this so much more than I thought I was going to because I recently read volume 1 of Yurisei Yatsura. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly but her uh, alien sci-fi comedy story and I didn't really like it so I was nervous to jump into these because I thought it wasn't gonna work out for me but in the end I really did enjoy these and um they're kind of heavy so let me just put these down and just hold up volume one. Yeah, so basically it's a romantic comedy and all of the characters live in one house with this character here being the, what's that called when they're in charge of the house? Manager, resident manager, okay. I feel like there's another word for it. Intendant, intendant, superintendent, I don't know. She basically is just in charge of the building and keeping all the residents in order and keeping the building in order. And romantic comedy stuff ensues. Such a great fun cast of characters. Everyone has such personality. It's so fun. It's so funny. I caught myself laughing out loud multiple times. I was starting to think that maybe Japanese humor from like the 70s and the 80s weren't my style, but this just proves that wrong. Of course, again, it's Rumiko Takahashi, so the artwork is fantastic amazing, beautiful, and it's just such a fun slice of life series and I definitely want to continue on. This next manga I was hoping to read more of because uh you know the title it's Your Lie in April of course. I wanted to read more but I only ended up getting two volumes one two and three in April. I'm definitely continuing the story. I absolutely love this story and I find the artwork to be gorgeous for lack of a better word. The anime was actually one of the first animes I ever watched back in high school and it has just stuck with me still to this day and I even made Edgar watch it and then he fell in love with it and it's just it's such a great story. I really enjoy it. I will say though if I had read this by itself without having ever seen the anime, I don't know if I would feel the same or if I would feel differently because I will say that in the anime I like how the characters are drawn a bit differently and I also like being able to hear the music in the anime so it's like another level 
for enjoyment i guess all right so the last manga i have to talk about today was another reread for myself and that is volumes 6 through 13 of dawn of the arcana kana kana i don't know so essentially this is set in a fantasy world where two countries on one island have not the best relationship one is definitely a lot more powerful than the other and so the weaker country sends a princess to marry a prince from the more powerful kingdom to better relations between the two of them and you know so we have that arranged marriage trope going on and then there's a lot of stuff with magic and ajin and i mean that's really all you need to know it is a product of its time for sure it is i don't think objectively a good series but in my nostalgic mind for it because this was the first manga series I ever read. I still really love it, still really enjoy it. I will say that I blocked out the ending and then rereading the ending now was a shock, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. So I guess I would just say that this is a very easy to read series. It's very digestible and you can just compulsively read it. It's fun in that way, very light in that way. Well, not really light, but it's just really easy to get through. And I thought that the romance between the two characters in The Arranged Marriage, Nakaba and Prince Caesar, I really enjoyed that. That ending was just terrible. Probably my least favorite manga ending that I've ever read. And now I can see why younger me blocked out that ending so that I wouldn't have to remember that. I still have such a soft spot for this series and for these characters in my heart. Again, what can I say? Nostalgia just has me in a chokehold. It really does. And it's never going to let up. It never will. Okay, so that is everything I was able to read in the month of April. Please let me know what is your favorite thing that you read in April and why. And then if you're so inclined, I would love to hear the worst thing you read in April. It doesn't have to be like super terrible, but maybe just compared to the other stuff you got into, it wasn't as good. And, you know, let me know why. Thank you all so much for watching. That's pretty much all I have to say.